and in this module, we're going to start building our ASP.NET MVC application. I hope you'll follow along with this module and throughout the rest of the course as we continue to add features in the application that will start in this module. Throughout this course, I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2019, and everything that you need to complete this course you can get with the Community Edition of Visual Studio 2019. The Community Edition is a completely free download from Microsoft. If you do a search for download Visual Studio, you should be able to come to this web page, visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads. And from here, you can click on the button to download this free community edition of Visual Studio. Of course, web pages and user interfaces, they change all the time. So this page and this URL might look different when you're watching this video in the future, but there should always be a way to download the free edition of Visual Studio 2019, the community edition. When you are installing Visual Studio 2019, I want to call some attention to some specific options that you need to install. So I have already installed Visual Studio 2019, but I'm going to open up the installation program that you can open up at any time. And from in here, I'm going to click on the modify button to modify the installation. And I just want to show you that you want to make sure that you select the ASP.NET and web development workload to install. So make sure that option is installed and that should install ASP.NET and the ASP.NET MVC framework. Now, to be very specific about the framework that we're going to use in this course, we are going to be using the ASP.NET MVC5 framework. The version numbers around ASP.NET can be a little bit confusing, but ASP.NET MVC5 is part of the larger ASP.NET 4 framework. So this is version 5 of the MVC framework that ships as part of ASP.NET 4. And this is the framework and the technology that we're going to be using in this course. If you've heard of or are aware of ASP.NET Core, then this is not the course for ASP.NET Core. I have another course covering ASP.NET Core that is very similar to this course in that it teaches you the fundamentals, but we are going to be working with ASP.NET and VC5. If you want an overview of the differences between MVC5, which is part of ASP.NET 4, and ASP.NET Core, Microsoft does have some documentation out there. You can see that ASP.NET Core is completely open source. It works across platforms. And if you want to develop on Mac OS or Linux, then ASP.NET Core is really the best option from Microsoft for that. On the other hand, you might be working with an organization that is still using the ASP.NET 4 framework. And there are many of us that do this. ASP.NET 4 includes ASP.NET MVC version 5, which we will be using, and it builds on top of the full .NET framework. The full .NET framework allows you to take advantage of technologies like Windows Communication Foundation, WCF, as well as ASP.NET Web Forms, and Web API, and Web Pages. In this course, we're going to be building an application that accesses data inside of a SQL Server database. I will show you how to work with models and views and controllers, the three words for which the MVC framework is named. And along the way, I'm going to give you some best practices and some guidance and some tips on how to most effectively use ASP.NET. To get started, the first step will be creating a project in Visual Studio. Let's take a look at how to do that next. I have already installed and launched Visual Studio 2019. And here in the opening window, there is an option to achieve what I want to do, which is create a new project. I'm going to click on that box and come to the screen where I can select one of the templates available from a number of templates here for creating a project. And just so you know, you can filter these project templates by language, platform, and project type. So if I know that I want to work with C Sharp and I only want to see C Sharp projects, I can select C Sharp and I can also set the project type to be a web project type. That will be useful to know in just a minute, but for right now, I want to select a special type of template known as the empty or blank template. So if you do a search for empty or blank, you should be able to find an option for a blank solution. A solution file in Visual Studio 2019 will allow you to organize one or more projects. What we're ultimately going to do for this application is create multiple projects. I'll talk about why you might also want to have multiple projects. But anytime you have multiple projects, you'll probably want a solution file that can group and organize those projects so you treat them as one solution, one application. 
We'll see how that works as we move throughout the course. I want to start with a blank solution that has no projects inside. So I have complete control over where the projects are going to live and where my solution file exists. I'm going to select blank solution and click next. It's a little bit confusing because the next screen will say configure your new project. Although technically we're not creating a new project yet. We're just creating a solution. But again, this will give you complete control over how things are laid out on the file system. I want to create a project that is a solution by the name of Ode to Food. What we're going to build is a simple application that will allow a user to view and edit restaurants. Since we're oriented around food, this is going to be the Ode to Food project, the Ode to Food solution. I have a specific location in mind for this project. It is under a GitHub folder, and I want to place it into a folder called Ode to Food MVC. You can select any location on your file system, but I'm storing it in a specific location where I keep my GitHub projects. And you'll notice the solution name is going to be Ode to Food. When I click Create, this should open the Visual Studio IDE. And if I come to the Solution Explorer window, which is currently closed, I can click on this to open the window. I now have a solution, which is Ode to Food. If, for some reason, you do not have a Solution Explorer window available, you can always go to the View menu and click on Solution Explorer. The keyboard shortcut for this is Control-Alt-L, but if I click on Solution Explorer, even if this window is closed, it should open up. I can now pin this window so it always appears here on the right-hand side of the IDE. And now that we have this blank solution ready to go, my next step will be to add a project into the solution. We'll do that in the next clip. Now that I have a solution file, I can start to place projects into the solution. A project in Visual Studio and .NET is a place where I can write my code and compile that code into something that I can run and execute or host in a web server. So the first project I want to add to the solution is the project that will represent my web application. It will contain all the code that I need to respond to requests from a browser or respond to requests from a client as part of an API and return HTML or JSON or images or JavaScript, whatever I need to return from this web application. So let's right click on the solution. And I want to say that I want to add a new project. Once I select this option, this should open up a dialog that again, we'll see this list of standard templates that you can use in Visual Studio. And what I want to do is create a web project based on the C Sharp language. So I'm going to filter by the language type of C Sharp. I'm going to select a project type of web. And one of the templates that should come up here at this point is the ASP.NET web application template. So I don't want to create an ASP.NET core project. I cover this topic in a different course. I want to create an ASP.NET web application that is built on the .NET framework. So I'm going to select that option and click next. And now I can fill out some information about my project. I want this project name to be Ode to Food. Dot web. So this is part of the larger solution for Ode to Food. And the larger solution is a system and application that is designed to deliver restaurant information to the end users. But this specific project represents the web UI portion of the solution. You might create a separate project to host all the classes and code related to data access for your application. You might have a separate project for unit tests. You might want to include a separate project that represents the domain or the business objects that are central to your application. I'm going to stick with a relatively straightforward solution. I am going to create a dedicated project here for the web application, and I'm going to place it underneath the Ode to Food directory, and I'm going to use the latest version of the .NET framework, which is version 4.7.2. For the most part, there are no major changes planned for the ASP.NET MVC framework. So if you want to try using a later, newer version of the .NET framework, feel free to try that. But if you want to be as compatible as possible with the code that I'm writing, you also might want to stick with .NET framework 4.7.2. I'm going to click Create, and now I can be a little more specific about the type of ASP.NET web application that I want to create. So there are project templates in here that allow me to create an empty application or an application based on ASP.NET web forms, which have been around and a part of .NET since the very beginning of .NET. There's also the MVC project template, which is oriented towards building a web application that's going to have a user interface, and that's slightly different from the Web API project. This also builds an ASP.NET 
that web application, but everything is a little more oriented towards building an API. So something that's going to send and receive JSON and XML. You can add a user interface to a web API project, and you can add an API to an MVC project. So these choices aren't entirely exclusive, but I am going to start with the MVC project. There's also an example of how to build a single page application. We'll take a look at some of these other project types later in the course, but right now we're going to build an MVC application. I do want to configure this project for HTTPS. We're not going to start off with Docker support, but that is very easy to add later. I'm just going to click create. Visual Studio will need to think a bit, but eventually when this dialogue completes back in Visual Studio and the Solution Explorer window, I should now have a solution and the ode to food.web project. Inside of this project are a number of folders that we will be talking about throughout the course. There's also .cs files, which represent the code behind this application. And the first thing I'm going to do just to make sure that everything is working correctly is I'm going to go to the build menu and say that I want to build this entire solution. This will force Visual Studio to use the MS build tool to run the C sharp compiler across all of the code here. And I can see that I have successfully built one project. It is built into what we call an assembly, the ode foodweb.dll assembly. So that contains compiled code for my application. And if you want more details about the compiler and C sharp, then please go watch my C sharp fundamentals course. But for now, the next thing I want to do is come into the debug menu and I want to start this application running without the debugger. I'm not really wanting to debug my application. I just want to see it up and running in a browser. This did open a window on a separate monitor. So I'm going to drag that window over here. You can see that I'm looking at a screen that says there's a potential security risk ahead. So here's what happens. ASP.NET and Visual Studio try to set things up so that you can start developing with transport layer security turned on. That is SSL or HTTPS. And in order to do that, Visual Studio will add a certificate to your development web server, which is IIS Express. And this security certificate is self-signed. So most browsers will not recognize this certificate as coming from a trusted source. Now, different browsers might have different screens here. And for some browsers, they will trust the certificate because it has been registered in Windows as something to trust. But Firefox in particular is going to come back and say it has detected a potential security threat. We can go into the advanced menu and see that, yes, this is a self-signed certificate, but that's okay. I do want to work with this website localhost. So I will say that I will accept the risk and continue on. When I do that, the browser will go ahead and send off a request to localhost. And eventually, yes, fingers crossed, my application is up and running successfully. So when you use the ASP.NET MVC template to create a new web project in Visual Studio 2019, you'll be given an application that already has a home page. It already has an about page. It already has a page that shows contact information. It has all these little features right out of the box. What we want to do is start building Ode to Food. That is going to be a website that displays restaurant information. Let's take a first step towards that goal in the next clip and create a new project with a class inside that can represent a restaurant. The goal for this module is to show restaurant data on the home page of the application. We're not going to talk to a database right away, but I want to pretend or simulate how things will work when we talk to a real SQL Server database. In order to get that far, I'm going to need classes that define the shape of the data that I want to query for in SQL Server and that I can use to place data onto the home page. So I need a restaurant class that will hold restaurant data and I need a service or a component or an abstraction that I can use to go out and pretend to query my SQL Server database for this restaurant information. Once we have those basics in place and we learn a little bit more about how this framework behaves, then we're going to be able to drill into more detail in each of the following modules and also switch things over to work with a real SQL Server database. But to get started, what I want to do is place my data related abstractions into a separate project. Now there's nothing that says you need multiple projects to build a web application. I could have this one project, ode to food.web, and I could place everything that I need into this one single project, all the code I need, as well as all the HTML and JavaScript and CSS and everything else that goes into a web project. But I also just want to show you what it would look like if you decide to separate or break down a large application into smaller pieces and smaller projects. What happens, for example, 
if I need to access my Ode to Food database from several different applications. Some people would say you should only do that with services or microservices. But what if I have some small utilities that need to talk to the database? In that case, it might help to place all of my data-related abstractions into a separate project, and then I can share and reuse that project among other applications. I could even take that project and publish it as a NuGet package so that other teams inside of my own company can actually make use of that code. So what I'm going to show you is how to create another project and how we can reference that project and use the abstractions inside of that project from our web application. So once again, right click on the solution and I want to add a new project. This time I am not looking for a web application. This time what I'm going to look for is a class library. So I'm not trying to build an application that stands alone and can execute. I'm trying to build a library that can be shared and reused across multiple projects. So I'm going to pick class library built on top of the .NET framework and then click the next button. So this will allow me to write C Sharp classes that I can share amongst multiple projects. We will name this project odafood.data. We will place it as a subfolder of odafood and once again we will use .NET framework 4.7.2. I'm going to click create and Visual Studio has added an additional project to my solution. Inside of this project, it has given me a starting class, class1.cs. I don't need that class, so I'm going to delete that class. Instead, we're going to add a class to represent restaurant information, and we will do that in the next clip. For the data project, there are actually at least two different categories of abstractions that I want to add to this project. One of those categories would be the category that would hold all of the classes that define the shape of my data. That would include classes like a restaurant class to hold restaurant information. But also in this project, I want to add some abstractions that represent the services or the components that I will use to access data. And since I have these two different categories, it would be nice to place those two different types of abstractions into two different namespaces which in .NET and c -sharp programming means I should use some folders to categorize my type. So let's add a folder. Let's call it models. This represents my business objects or my domain model or the entities or the information essentially that I want to store in a database. We're not going to cover a specific style of programming here, like domain-driven development or test-driven development. Those are topics that are covered in other courses. But I do want to store restaurant information in the database and query for restaurants and display restaurants on the home page. So I will need a class to represent a restaurant. Let's add a class to this folder and let's call it restaurant.cs. The template I just used when I right clicked and said that I wanted to add a new item, I selected the class template. I could have also right clicked and said that I want to just add a class. So I would select that template right away. This gives me a basic.cs file with some common namespaces already included. It also gives me an internal class, which I cannot use outside of this project. But since I will need to use this class in the web project, let me go ahead and add a public modifier to this class so I can use it outside of the odafood.data project. And now let's describe some of the attributes and some of the state that should be stored for each restaurant. Every restaurant will be stored in a SQL Server database, and SQL Server likes to give entities, or each record that's in a table, a primary key. So let's create a property using the prop code snippet, which is P-R-O-P, and I can just press tab to expand that into an auto-implemented property in Visual Studio. Let's create an integer property named ID. So I just need to type P-R-O-P, hit tab, and then I can tab between the name and the type of this property. So another property I might want to add would be a string property that can hold the name of the restaurant. Now there's all sorts of interesting information that we could store about a restaurant. We could store the location. We could have relationships defined in our database. So every restaurant has a collection of employees. Every restaurant has a collection of menus. There's the lunch menu. There's the dinner menu. We could really build out quite a sophisticated model. But for this course, I'm going to keep things very simple. I'm going to give you all the concepts that you just need to apply to keep adding more complexity into an application. But we're going to stick with a relatively simple definition for a restaurant. We'll store the ID and the name, and perhaps let's choose one other thing just to make it interesting. Let's store the cuisine type of a restaurant. So I could add another string property and name that property cuisine. 
and this will represent a column in the database that allows pretty much free form text entry. You can enter anything that you want as a cuisine. But what if we wanted to restrict the possible values of cuisine? Well, one way, just one approach you can use to do that is to define an enum in C Sharp. Let's do that. I'm going to right click on the models folder again, and I want to add another new item. Again, I'm going to select class for the type of item that I want to add, and we are going to add a new type, the cuisine type. This will generate an internal class, but I'm going to change this to a public enum instead. And then the members of our enum, let's start with a none. So this represents a restaurant that does not have a specific cuisine, or perhaps it's an unknown cuisine. And then let's just pick a few easy cuisines out of the hundreds of available cuisines in the world. Let's just say Italian, there's Indian, and there's French. And if we come back to restaurant, I can now change this to be of type cuisine type. And this will define the model that I want to use for a restaurant. It will define what I want to show on the screen, as well as what I want to store in the database. More on this type of model later in the course, but for right now, let's move to the next clip and define some components or some abstractions that we can use to query a data source of restaurants. In this clip, we're going to get right into the essence of the ASP.NET MVC framework. And if you feel like this clip is going too fast, don't worry, we're going to spend the rest of the course diving into some of the details around the concepts and techniques that I show you in this clip. Because what we need to do in this clip is respond to a request for the root of the website, so localhost port and some port number. I need to respond to this request, and ultimately what I want to do is display a list of all the restaurants that I know about in our database, which is an in-memory database. And what we will discover is that in the model view controller framework, you have a model, you have a view, and you have a controller, and it is the controller's responsibility to figure out how to respond to a particular request. So when a request arrives for slash home slash contact, what piece of software is responsible for saying, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to show the contact page. Likewise, when a request arrives for slash home slash about, what piece of software, what class, what piece of code has to execute and say that the appropriate response is to display the application description page. And when I'm on the home URL, the root URL, just localhost port 44388 slash, what is the combination of components that determine that this is the appropriate response? Well, the first thing I want to show you is that there's always a controller behind the scenes, the controller which starts with C, which is part of the MVC framework. The C stands for controller, and it is the controller that is responsible for determining what to do with this request. So if I come back into Visual Studio, I will see there is a controllers folder, and inside of this folder, and inside of this folder, there is a class named home controller. Like I say, we'll be diving into more details later in the course. We're going to figure out exactly what are the rules that direct that request to this class. But right now, I just want to show you that inside the home controller, there is a method on this class named index. And ultimately, a request for the home page of the application to the root of the application is going to invoke this index method. Currently, it is returning a view, which starts with V, and that's the V in the MVC framework, model view controller. I'm going to change this just temporarily and say that I want to return just a simple string. We're going to return the text, hello world, with an exclamation point. Only this doesn't work because the return type of this method is of type action result. So let me also temporarily tell the C-sharp compiler that this method just returns a string. And this is going to be legal code. I'm going to do a build in the project. So shift control B is the keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio 2019 to do a build. And because I am running the application without a debugger attached, remember I started without the debugger. As long as my web server is still running, I should be able to come to the browser. And now that I've rebuilt the application, I can just refresh and I can see the updated code. The updated code says to respond with just hello world. And that's because this request from the browser arrived at this method. So one way to respond to a request is just to return a string. And this string could include HTML markup if I wanted to use this approach where I write HTML inside of my C-sharp strings. But that's not a very pleasant solution. It's very difficult to write HTML correctly when you're just inside of a string literal in the C-sharp language. And that's why we have these special files 
known as views. So instead of returning a string, I'm going to return what happens when I invoke the view method that is a member of this home controller. I'm going to change the return type back to action result. And I will tell you that when I return view from a controller method, the MVC framework is going to go looking for a specific file in a specific folder to find the HTML that I want to render into the browser or render into the response when this method is invoked. And again, all of this is covered in more details throughout the rest of the course. But if I go to the views folder, this is by default where all the views associated with my application will reside. And when I render a view from the home controller, the framework will look in a home folder. And when I render a view from the index method of that particular controller, the framework is going to look for a file index.cshtml. So cshtml is the extension for a razor view with the MVC framework. And as the extension implies, this file can be a combination of HTML markup and C sharp code, little C sharp expressions. So right now, everything that you see here, like the text ASP.NET is a free web framework. If I come back to the browser, ASP.NET is a free web framework. You might remember that that was part of the text that was displaying in the browser before I made that change to the home controller. In fact, now that I have changed this back to rendering a view, let me just do another shift control B to rebuild the project and let's come back into the web browser and refresh. And we should now be looking at the results of what happens when the MVC framework renders this view, index.cshtml. And what I want to do is instead of returning a string from my controller action, let me just replace some of the text that is inside of here. I'll just add a simple div and now say hello world. But now I'll be in some properly formatted HTML. And in fact, everything else inside of index.cshtml, I'm going to delete for right now. I need to save that file. I'll also do a build just in case and refresh the browser. And I can now see hello world. This is displaying inside of a bootstrap jumbotron. So bootstrap is a CSS framework that helps us present our HTML and modify the layout and the colors. And because back in my razor page, because I am in a div that has a class of jumbotron, bootstrap is going to apply some special styles to this text to make it appear like what you're seeing here. But what if this is not the text I want to display? What if I want to display a list of all the restaurants that I know about. Well, in that case, I need the M from MVC. So when my controller is deciding what to do, when it's deciding that it needs to render a view, it also needs to build a model. And that model is going to contain all the information that my view needs to complete its job. Let's look at how to build a model inside of this controller in the next clip. If the home page of our application needs to display a list of all the restaurants in the database, then our home controller index method needs to build a model that carries all that information about the restaurants into the view, because this is the essence of the separation of concerns that is a part of the model view controller design pattern. The controller is responsible for receiving a request and deciding what to do next. Do I render a view? Do I render a string? Do I render XML or JSON? The controller here is making a decision to render a view. The view is only going to care about presentation. The view is not allowed to do data access. It's not supposed to be calling web services. Instead, the controller is responsible for building a model. The model is going to contain all the information that the view needs to present. And then the controller hands that model off to the view. The model doesn't know anything about the controller. The model doesn't know anything about the view. It doesn't know if it's going to be presented as JSON or XML or placed into an HTML document. The model is simply there to transport the data and logic related to the business. So we have the controller receiving a request and building a model. The controller hands things off to a view, which is responsible for presenting that information. In order to make all this work, my controller is going to need an in-memory restaurant data component to be able to fetch and build a model. So let's go ahead and add a private field to our home controller. We will make this of type iRestaurantData, which means I need to do two things in order to access that interface. First, I need to add a reference from the odefu.web project to the odefu.data project. If you haven't worked with C Sharp before, References tell the C-sharp compiler 
where to look when it's trying to resolve symbols. So where does iRestaurant data come from? Well, it's not an interface that is defined as part of the .NET framework, and it's not part of this project. So we have to tell the C-sharp compiler by adding a reference. And I can do that here in Visual Studio by pressing Control period and selecting the option to add a reference to odafood.data. Or I can also do that over here if I right click on the project and say that I want to add and down here in the context menu, select reference. When I add a reference, I can select from assemblies that might be in the global assembly cache or on disk. I can browse to any assembly. You can see I already have some references here to assemblies like Microsoft.C Sharp. But what I want to do is reference a project, another project that is in the same solution. So I'm going to go to the projects tab and I'm going to select odefood.data. Once I bring in that assembly reference, it will be listed here as one of the references in my project. You can see there's many others. And then I just need to add a using statement for the namespace so that the C-sharp compiler can now find that type iRestaurant data. I'm going to do that using control period and Visual Studio and just selecting using odefood.data.services. So this is the type of our private field. And let's just call the field We'll give it a name of DB because ultimately this is how I want the controller to think about the database. It's going to access the database through this interface, iRestaurant data. We will also give our controller a constructor to initialize this field. So I want this to be a new instance of in memory restaurant data. Now, later in the course, I'm going to show you a much better approach for retrieving an object that implements the iRestaurant data interface. But right now, we're going to do the simplest possible thing, which is simply to construct a new instance of a concrete type, the in-memory restaurant data type. And we're going to place that into a field in the controller, and we're just going to start using it. Later in the course, I'll show you how you can add a lot of flexibility to your MVC applications by avoiding the new keyword, and instead using a technique known as dependency injection. We'll get to that later. For right now, I have something that implements iRestaurant data, it's available to my controller, and I'm going to use it to build a model. My model will simply be what happens when I ask my data source to give me all the restaurants that are in the database. That is now my model, and I'm going to pass this model into the view. Here's how to think about this. When I invoke the view method, this is a method that I inherit from my base controller class, and it's something that I can invoke to produce an action result. An action result in general tells the MVC framework what to do next. So once we're finished with this index method, what should the MVC framework do next? Well, it should render a view. It's going to render the default view for the index action of the home controller, which means it will be the index.cshtml view that's in the home folder of the views folder. That's what's going to happen. And when the MVC framework goes out to index.cshtml to render this view and figure out what HTML to produce, we are going to pass along an object that represents the model. And that object in this case is going to be an I enumerable of a restaurant. Let's see how to use that model and put it to use in the next clip. If I told you that this index razor view receives as a model object, a collection of restaurants to display, then your first question might be, how do I use my model object inside of this view, inside of the syntax that you're showing me? Well, of course, I'm going to give you many more details and tips about razor views as we move throughout this course. But for right now, I just want to demonstrate how easy it is to move and transition between literal text and HTML markup and writing C-sharp code. So when I use the at sign, that will transition the Razor engine from HTML markup mode into C-sharp expression mode. And if I write a C-sharp expression here, then at runtime, the Razor engine can evaluate that expression and output the result into the response. In other words, if I write a simple C-sharp expression, like datetime.now.year, and then I save this index.cshtml view and I come back to the browser and I do a refresh, I can see that yes, I am recording this and currently it is the year 2019. So back in Visual Studio, when I need to display dynamic information, so something that is not just static text, like writing out the div as part of my HTML or writing out the word ASP.NET, when I need something dynamic, I can switch over into C-sharp mode 
and I can inspect something about my model object and output it anywhere I want inside of this HTML. So that's the first thing to know about razor views. The second thing to know about razor views is that when I use the at sign and I'm writing C sharp code, I can access properties that are part of the object that is this view. One of those properties is named model with an uppercase M. So at model, that is accessing the model object that the controller has given to this view. Now I know that the controller is passing this view a collection of restaurants. I know I have an I enumerable of restaurants. Unfortunately, Visual Studio and the Razor View Engine, they do not know that model is going to be an I enumerable of restaurant, not yet at least. We'll solve that in just a minute. But let's pretend that the first thing I want to do is just write out the text that says, there are X number of restaurants in the database, whatever X is. In that case, I might create a div here inside of the Jumbotron. And I can do that by typing div, that's like a shortcut, and then pressing tab. That will expand out to give me my opening div tag and my closing div tag. And inside of here, I can say there are X number of restaurants in the database. How do I make X dynamic? Well, again, I'll write some sort of expression here with C sharp and use the at sign. Ultimately, I'll be able to go directly to the model. But for right now, I just want to show you that I can invoke a method on the enumerable class that is part of the .NET framework. I can invoke a method named count and I can pass in this model property that is available to my view. So all I'm trying to do is say how many restaurants I know about in the database or how many restaurants do I have in my model and I can do that by writing the c-sharp expression using enumerable.count and passing in my model object which is an enumerable so once again if I save that view and come back out to the browser and refresh I can now see there are three restaurants in the DB perhaps that's not the best English sentence in the world so let's just change that around now that I'm seeing it we'll just say there are X restaurants in the database but now let me also show you that I can tell Visual Studio and the Razor Engine and I can tell everybody that this model object I am receiving, it has to be of type I enumerable of restaurant. I can do that by using what's known as a Razor directive. It's a little bit confusing because a directive also starts with an at sign. But in this case, I'm going to use a lowercase m and say at model. And what I'm going to do is tell the Razor View Engine the type of the model it should expect to receive. The type of that model is going to be I enumerable and it's going to be of type odafood.data.models.restaurant. So for right now inside of a razor view, I'm going to use the full type name including the namespace. Later I'll show you how you can shorten this. But this first line here is known as a model directive at model lowercase m. And it is telling everybody that the type of model this view expects to process is of type I enumerable of restaurant. Now, once I do that, when I come to my model property, this model property should be typed as I enumerable of restaurant. You can see that over here in the IntelliSense window. I'm now working with I enumerable of restaurant. So now what I should be able to do is invoke a count method that is available for I enumerable through the magic of extension methods and the system.link namespace. We'll talk about how that namespace gets involved here later. But the big picture here is that I have a model object I'm receiving from my controller. I can access that model object through the model property of this view, which I can get to once I use the at sign. And I can type that property using the at model directive. So now, once again, I'm going to save and come back and refresh, and I should still see the text. There are three restaurants. But now my model object is a little bit easier to work with. So how do I create a list of all the restaurant names that I know about, let's say? Perhaps I want to put my list of restaurants in a UL, an unordered list, and each restaurant name will go inside of a list item. But in that case, once again, I can rely on the fact that I can write C-sharp code and I can write a for each statement. So I can say for each restaurant that you find in the model property, I want to do the following. And this is a really good demonstration of how you can mix C sharp code and HTML inside of a razor view. Because when I use the at sign, the razor view engine knows to transition into C sharp mode. And what's it going to do in C sharp? Well, it's going to set up a loop. And inside the body for each loop, what I want to do is write out a list item. And at this point inside of here, I now have access to a local variable named restaurant. But what I'll be doing is I'll be creating a list item 
for each restaurant that is in the model. So if I have three restaurants, I'll be creating three list items. And since I have access to a local variable now, restaurant, I can also use at restaurant and create an expression that writes out the restaurant name. And you can see just how easy it is to transition from literal text in HTML into a C sharp expression or a C sharp statement using the at sign. But the razor parser is also pretty smart and it knows when to transition out of C sharp mode and back into HTML and literal text mode. So it knows that angle bracket slash li here is probably not a piece of C sharp code that I want to evaluate. That's probably HTML and the razor engine just does the right thing. So now if I save all my files, save my view, come back to the browser and refresh, I should now see a list of those three restaurants that we put together as the model object in my controller. And what you've just witnessed is really just the essence of the MVC framework. And the majority of the rest of this course is just going to be going into the finer details of how to work with the MVC framework. And we're going to see more views, which are responsible for presenting the model object. It's the controller that puts together that model object. And the controller will typically do that using services and components that you give to it. It's going to use those to build a model and select a view to render. But as we'll see, a controller can also make some other decisions. So it can decide to deny access to a particular section of the application. It can decide to redirect to another URL. The controller really is in control of what happens when a particular request arrives for the application. Now that we have this overview of the MVC framework, let's wrap up this module and move to the next module where we will start building upon what we've learned here and learn about how this application is put together.